Founded in 2015, Peak Relief is the premier landing spot for your medical marijuana needs in Maryland. Not built by national consultants or businesses, but by friends with a dream to return home and create a better dispensary. Located at 2001 Chapman Ave in Rockville, Maryland, stop by Peak Relief and see what they have in store for you. Next thought popped in my mind, you was the first person I was like, yo, could Stanley be a good person to have this convo with? So recently, actually over the last couple of weeks, I've been having conversations about legalization. You know, like legalization of cannabis, watching it, whether or not it's going to come to Georgia, it's been this state now, we heard it in Illinois, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But I've also been hearing issues from people who, who sell in the black market. And, and from, I mean, literally, I had, to, I had to take a poll. We're talking about from California to here. I'm talking to, listening to people discuss issues they are having with businesses they've been doing for years prior to any of these new laws and all this other stuff. So I wanted to get your opinion on legalization versus the black market and whether or not legalization is, is, is a super positive thing when it comes to, you know, saying like clearly we have people who are already on the scene doing shit. They were already skilled doing it. But now mm -hmm. you can't necessarily do it without certain certain levels of shit that you need to have in place. So I want to speak to you about that, like legalization versus the black market. And, and why is one more better than the other? Why is legalization more of a more of a, a better a better um, option than, than the black market? Uh, that's a very good question, and people need to understand that with the expansion of the entire cannabis industry, mm -hmm. each state that goes legal, it immediately affects the black market. Yes. Let's, so let's just say Georgia goes legal right now, mm -hmm. and they have dispensaries everywhere. Yeah. What is it going to do to the black market? People are going to say, I don't want it in the sandwich bag anymore. I want it in this cool jar, <laughs> label. I want it in a box. I yeah. want to go in there and be able to pick it out. Yeah. And once they make prices comparable... People are going to say, okay, I'm going to go here. But with legalization also comes taxation. Yes. And that taxation comes from the permits, the licenses, and the fees. Well, that money goes to something. The law enforcement, they get theirs too. Because what happens is that gives them something to enforce. Hmm. I'm going to enforce your permits. We're going to go in. We're going to make sure everybody's regulated. Yeah. Make sure all these grows are regulated. Yeah. So oftentimes, a lot of the packs on the street come from those unregulated grows. So look at Prop 215, which California, California had, yep. and then they went to Proposition 64. So like I told everybody about a year ago, I was like, listen guys, I know y'all think it's just the, the, the cannabis wonderland out here. <laughs> I say it's gonna shut down all those 12 to $1,700 bags and go to about 2,400. Mm -hmm. They're like, what, no, no, listen, once they go fully legal, it's gonna drive up prices yeah. because they're gonna start really enforcing the unregulated entities. Mm -hmm. And you've seen all those videos mm -hmm. where they've just spent a millions of dollars in tax dollars with mm -hmm. helicopters in the air. Burning tanks, down farms oh, and shit. <laughs> about yeah. 200 yeah. law enforcement together from different jurisdiction and formed the amazing cannabis task force and then they went through california like xerces mm -hmm. everybody that is unregulated those four or five hundred plant farms those whole hillsides um they're gone guys yeah they thanos it a lot of that was coming <laughs> To Metro Atlanta, it was going to Texas, it was mm -hmm. going to New York. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the people you've been getting it from who've had it on this hillside since 1994, they now have nothing. Now they're facing felony charges. Mm -hmm. Their money's going to go to legal fees. Yeah. And also, you got to look at natural disasters as well. The California wildfires. You got to understand those cannabis farms are burning up as well. And if we were looking for that harvest to pay for this year's permits, our fees, our equipment, and our overhead, we just lost it. There's no insurance on it. That drives it up on the black market. Mm -hmm. Because now you have, it's forcing a lot of people to either get worse quality flour or better quality flour. And that's actually something I ran into in Atlanta. You know, where that was literally my option. Like, bro told me, he's like, bro, either you're gonna get really, really good shit or you're gonna get some super bad at this moment. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's just, it's just what the fuck is going on, which has got us spurred into this whole conversation. Cause I was just interested in that, you know, I'm really watching it affect people I know. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which is just bizarre to me. But another thing I'm watching right now and I wanted to get your opinion on, was um what's, uh, what's what could happen in Georgia? You know, we, we speak often about legalization. I don't know how close legalization, actual legalization, would be in this state, but we have seen some some growth. You know, saying even personally with our own two eyes. One thing I saw that that kind of did spark my mind towards where are we really going in Georgia was when I was heading down Edgewood to go chop up with one of my black market friends. You know, what I'm saying just on just on some cool shit, and I'm walking down Edgewood and I, and I get met by this big billboard. 
And if you know the billboard I'm talking about, if you're coming off the highway on the edge when you're banging that right, you would have ran right into the same billboard I, I ran into. And it was a billboard for a CBD product. And I thought to myself, that's odd. You know what I'm saying? Like this, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a billboard smack dab in the middle of Edgewood discussing CBD products. I remember my first thought, and I went and asked my man, oh, who's a black market dude? What the fuck you know about CBD? <laughs> so we started talking lightly, and he knew. And I said, bro, how many people around this area do you think actually know about CBD? And he said, probably very few, if anything. I said, so who does, who's this billboard targeted to at this, at this moment? Like, if nobody in this area really fully even knows and nobody's educating them about what's happening, why are there billboards popping up up here? Just like, why are there weed map billboards going down Northside Drive? If people don't, you feel me? Like, the, like I would say the reason it's positioned there is pretty yeah. strategic marketing because you have one of the number one teaching hospitals in the world. Grady, true. So you have a lot of students, you have a lot of educational personnel mm -hmm. who come through, you have a lot of patients that come through. That's a perfect place to put it. Yeah, and it's sparking a conversation, but I don't, I'm not sure it's sparking a conversation on the level I'm thinking of. You know what I'm saying? Because again, black market would be damned. That's going to eventually have to wash out. It just is what it is. It'll always be there. But we have people on this, we have people who are going to actually have to learn about what's happening around here. And I fear that that's a thing that's almost like flying past people. We're yeah. thinking more about legalization. We're thinking about how much you can smoke weed, but we're not thinking about anything else from CBD to just even basic laws that's being passed, why this billboard is here. You know what I'm saying? We're not thinking anything from on that level to me. And that bothers me. And it's because we have to shift our level of thinking and what we're thinking about. Yes. You know, stop looking at the what and start looking at the why. Yeah. We know what you're smoking. Why are you smoking Exactly. It? Why are you smoking it? And yeah. when it comes to the legalities of it, you know, as you know, I do a lot of work down at the state capitol. Mm -hmm. It's boring. That's the boring side of it. Yeah. But they don't understand. That's where all this comes from. So the reason with this, the CBD is booming like that is because Trump, with the federal hemp bill of course year. open so that, that up just pretty much opened up everybody mm -hmm. grow your hemp get your cbd mm -hmm. you don't have to grow full you know gas as they say to get cbd you know you just grow a strain of cbd that is of a lineage of those strains that they've got the thc percentage under 0.3 percent that qualifies for industrial hemp that's why look some of the quality of flower of hemp is the way it is but as far as the state of georgia you know that conversation came up this year a lot you know, as we're working on um, our bill. Yeah. And just to say, literally, this is some of the words from the speakers of the other house, you know, and they were saying we are not, the bill that they passed this year is in no way, form, or fashion pushing towards legalization in the state of Georgia. <laughs> they wanted to make that clear. The speaker of the house wanted to make that clear in the chambers that in no way, form, or fashion are they pushing towards smoking or having flower dispensaries. They do not. Georgia will potentially be one of the last states if it goes legal federally yeah. georgia will be like we'll go last <laughs> georgia and mississippi I'm, and i'm telling y'all from the <laughs> inside of that gold yeah, dome and i've seen yeah. some of your faces down at that gold dome and i'm telling you from there they have told you listen we want no part of it it's mm -hmm. because of the stigma that's still associated still yeah. with it so georgia you don't want legalization because if it goes legal you're not going to be able to afford it. You think your eights are going to be 40 bucks? Yeah. No, they got to pay for hey, the permits. Keep it funky. Y'all barely can afford it now because it's done jumped up $10 on the streets now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Y'all are close to and paying so when you look at dispensary it, prices. Because you got to have the state tax, yeah. the local tax, yeah. the cannabis law tax. Yeah. Anybody who's shopped in Cali recently can tell you, you know, you get a half of some, some good flour, maybe a couple of dabs or something, you're about 320 bucks. Like quick. You ever see one of them receipts from Cali? Yo, that oh, shit. I got some of them. Brother. Yeah. Shit, like, you look yeah. at the tax. Like, Wait yeah, a you, minute, you start bro, breaking it down. one dollars in tax. You start breaking it down. I feel like I should get something. Bro, some gummies or something. A friend, well, a friend of mine that was in, in Massachusetts right now, she was having a, a serious complaint because I guess she couldn't actually buy from any place. And the person who she bought from had to jump up his prices. So she like, I can't pay 60 for an eighth. And my face was like, for an eighth? The hell going on wait, out here? And this wait, is legal. There is a thing that quality over quantity oh i believe because in that i was in oh, Boston i believe in that and i met i, believe I, I was that. at the freedom rally and yeah. the guy was like man my eights are 60 bucks at the best bud at the fly at the, at the festival yeah and when i looked at it i didn't doubt it ask ebony knight she'll tell you about the grapefruit yeah she'll be like yeah it was amazing it was worth every penny yeah i so. feel you i feel you man but shit, if you ain't got it you ain't got it but you but you know again that's a and that's my next question. Do you actually even feel sympathy for folks? You know yes, what I'm saying? Like, yes. especially, so especially not, dealers. I don't want to say sympathy. Mm -hmm. um, I feel more so compassion. Mm -hmm. And it's not 
for the entrepreneurial aspects of it. It's for the patients in need. Yeah. Because oftentimes what happens with legalization, if she, they just have a medical program and you've been getting your RSO, your cancer oil mm -hmm. or whatever you need, you spend about $60 a week. You know, that gets you to the next week. It's hey, enough you, to maintain for your, 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 your disease process. Yeah. Well, once they go fully legal and they get rid of your medical program and it's all just a legal program, those same products may now be $65. Is you all, you thrown into the lump. Founded in 2015, Peak Relief is the premier landing spot for your medical marijuana needs in Maryland. Not built by national consultants or businesses, but by friends with a dream to return home and create a better dispensary. Located at 2001 Chapman Ave in Rockville, Maryland, stop by Peak Relief and see what they have in store for you. Them. Yeah, and they need yeah. this medicine. Yeah, and again, that bumping up a ten dollars, it don't sound like a lot to most people. Like you, you mm -hmm. pointed out a good, you pointed out a good fact, but that is, you know, what I'm saying because there are some people who have to get their RSO through all kind of different means. You know, what I'm saying because again, how much, how expensive it would be anyway to go get it somewhere else. So yeah, you got to think on. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yes, we do have a medical program. Mm -hmm. Did you call 1-800-PAIN? Tell him to, to, um, tell him to get in touch with me. Uh, one thing that we're working on is educating the physicians. Because um, there are physicians who've come to me just due to my experience as a paramedic that come into me like, hey, Stanley, um, I heard you're into the cannabis now. Can you get me signed up? Because all they have to do is go to the Department of Public Health website, mm -hmm. register to participate in the program, sign up. So that way, when they come into the office, they sign them up right there in, in the program. It's you can print it out right there. The card comes in the mail. It's a very simple process. Um, each physician may have their own their own fees. You know, there's a lot of physicians writing recommendations, but a lot of physicians just need the education behind it. That's why we got, we got a big plan. I got a lot for, in plan for y'all. <laughs> you know, um, speaking about getting about the black market and people on the ground, um, the name Branson has popped up a lot, especially since Grass is Greener. I don't know if you've seen the documentary Grass is Greener, but um, Fab Five and them actually speak about OG Branson up in Harlem. Um, me mm -hmm. and Danny had a chance to actually go meet him. You know, saying um, about was it three years ago now, four years ago, we had a chance to walk up in Harlem and go meet Branson. Branson's a genius when it comes to moving weed. Like in the '90s, from his packaging to his clientele to how safe he kept himself as he was doing this for almost ten, for almost ten, twenty years. He was way ahead of the curve. As we speak right now, though, you are a man with really no real background in cannabis, technically. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't actually get into the industry probably from, from certain ways that other people can get into the industry. But your skill set and what you did should actually warrant, you know what I'm saying, something. You know what I'm saying? When you think about people like Branson, do you feel like you could, they could ever actually thrive in the legal market as they did in the black market? Like, do you think there's ever a real way they can cross over? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think the, the key factors for that are going to be what do you want more? You want these short-term gains mm -hmm. or you want to achieve those long-term goals? You know, that's, that's up to the person. Yeah. Because you're going to have to eventually disassociate yourself and apply that same tactic to the corporate market. So just replace your homie with a chief financial officer. <laughs> Replace your homegirl who chop up the work yeah. with your executive assistant. Yeah. You know, and build out your build the same way you build a corporation cuz I personally think that the black market guys who had those large scale operations mm -hmm. are going to make the best CEOs in a few years. You I would hope so because when again, when I met Branson, one thing I, that that blew my mind away from me was how um nondescript this man was. Like for <laughs> somebody who I learned of you through Biggie, through Jada Kiss, through Lil Wayne, like people were literally throwing your name out there like yo I went to New York got a box from Branson he used to have these little purple boxes they would put the weed in like he would deliver it like that like they was coming up to you like that with the shits Branson was so like like laid back about the shit like you could see how he survived so long but I look at him now and I was looking at him like that's a brother who really should like you say you mm -hmm. should be like a multi-millionaire in this like before they even started passing these laws and, and start handing out handing out um accolades to people who ain't never did a damn thing really until y'all passed this law Step to him and say, yo, so where do you see this going? Because clearly you had the idea back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, where do you see this moving to? It's like how Gucci 
she came back and got, got dapper Dan. That's what I'm saying. Like, like who's gonna do that? Because who's gonna do that? Like, who's gonna really like? I'm yo. It's cool to talk about Branson, but who's gonna reach back and be like, yo, let's get it busy? Like Wizards or them, or, or who's gonna reach back and say, let's get busy? You know what I'm saying? Like at one, at some point, like like he mentioned with Gucci and Dapper Dan. Who's to say we can't? That, hey, I'll put, I'll, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. Look, in the industry. look, like, we we of, we could do it. Could, yes, because yes. <laughs> Yes. Cash color cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> now check it out. A lot of people don't like my answer to this question, but I don't ever tell you what you want to hear. I tell you what you need to hear. The number one stock you can invest in in this industry where we are right now is the stock in the mirror. Because right now we're at a position. Did y'all miss that? Start. <laughs> Stock in a mirror. That stock in the mirror. Wait, wait, wait. We're not selling no wait he's about to, to get to it. He's about to get you to the have, point. You don't have to. He's about to get to the point. You don't ever have to touch the flower. You can invest. You can say, okay, a software company. Like, okay, they got all these CBD companies. They need somewhere to market it. You can say, okay, they got all these CBD companies. They need somebody to drop it off. They're going to need somebody for payment processing. They're going to need somebody for delivery services. They're going to need somebody for inventory. Mm -hmm. oh, IT services. They're gonna need somebody for quality control. Yeah. Inspector Flower. Those are jobs right there. Those those are companies you can start right there. Ancillary businesses too. You don't I have. I started the Canamedic, bro. I was a paramedic, and I was like, how can I? You know what? Take off para. Yeah. Canon. Yeah. Canamedic, bro. I created something that didn't exist and started a business. Believe in whatever you create. Ancillary businesses is the thing that's gonna move this, bro. Like you can't really, you can't spend your life waiting for a law to get passed that could get overturned. You know what I'm saying? What are you gonna do in the meantime to make sure you not only are in this industry but you can make it through it? You know what I'm saying? That's where again, I, you know, I, cash color cannabis is that for us. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the I could do this wherever the hell I feel like doing it. And you ain't gonna stop me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. freedom of speech, motherfucker. This is what but I, I do. But one, you know what I'm but one of the strong <laughs> markets though on the other side of things is the Canadian market. I yes. do tell people to watch the Canadian market closely. Watch Africa too. Um, watch the Australian market. Um, there's a lot of trading going on. There's a lot of major companies purchasing a lot of major companies. I'm gonna, not going to drop any proprietary names, but one almost billion dollar company just acquired a $675 million company. That's a major merger. Mm. That's a major acquisition in yeah. the industry. And that just took place about three weeks ago. Yeah. So there's a lot of money being moved around. It's no lie. Like I remember um, I had to interview um, Sean Dolinger. He, he used to, well, he was at one point the CEO of, of Namaste, Namaste Technologies. They were eating up everything in Canada. Eating up everything. They they that fact they was being nicknamed the Amazon of weed at one point. Like they were they were wow. they were eating every company possible. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, pay attention to Canada because <laughs> they got the money and they're building up the st and they're building up the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The businesses are growing. Yeah, and Canadians are just nicer. <laughs> They're nice. Yo, speaking of nice, man, you 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 was on my sisters and them podcast, Blunt the podcast recently. Yes, man. I know they were talking sex and weed. Mm -hmm. How jumping are your DMs after being at the on their show, man? Like like what what was it like? Um. Like. I, I always get a lot of DMs. Is it, are they, they're not PG thirteen? I'm assuming. Yeah, I always get a lot of DMs. If y'all know me, Britney and London show, is 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 it's, it's, it's pretty it, raw. Yeah, it's pretty raw. It's pretty raw. <laughs> um, I always get a lot of DMs, but yeah. me, I keep it. You know, as personal as professional, I keep it separate. My thing is just due to my background in healthcare, I'm yeah. able to hold an intellectual discussion about sex, yeah. about intimacy, about feel. You know, just it's without making people feel uncomfortable or too or sexualizing the sex. If that makes sense, that was very interesting. Yeah, it was, um, man. Ladies, ladies, very interesting. Yeah, because it was a room full of them too. I was like, bro, you about to walk into the, yeah, the yeah, jungle. Was, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I have a whole village of cool yeah. people around me, and yeah. it's, it's like good to be around that energy though. Because sometimes men, it's good to be around that feminine yeah. energy and get those input, you know, to see their side of things. Bro, I love London and Brittany, man. Like everything they do is dope to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's big, big shout out to them. And I was, I was glad they had you on the show. I thought again, you was gonna add a super dope um, dimension to what they do. You know, mm -hmm. I saw. All this, the live so again congratulations for that and i'm sure your dms were jumping don't, yeah, play. Yeah. don't pretend <laughs> don't pretend they was like ah he's smart and yeah. all that <laughs> and he smoked weed <laughs> so i know you into kickboxing too man congratulations you, you moved up a jujitsu my bad yeah, don't, 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 don't look at me and find what you could choke me with nah, nah. <laughs> Good dude. Speak to me about man, because I know you just moved up a belt, man. Congratulations. Uh, the journey's not over, so uh, I actually got into start finding out about jujitsu in like 1997. Hoist Gracie in UFC two. 
Mm. You know, I used to watch it on VHS, and I always found out, like, wait a minute, the little bitty dudes can beat the big dudes by just breaking their ankles and choking them out? Like, yeah. this is cool. That happened. And then I got into the military, you know, hand-to-hand combat, and I got on the mats first time in 2005, got off. And then when I got sick, doctors told me that I would never be able to do physical exercise again. You know, remember we did decrim in Atlanta. I was still on my cane. On the first mm, I remember this. I was this. still wearing my hand brace. I remember. Then. I remember that Stanley. And um, hand brace Stanley. You know, just with through the cannabis oils and things, I felt my body getting stronger. So I got back on the mats. And so now I've been putting in the work. And so what I did was I had to take a technical test today in front of my instructors. They called out a lot of moves. I had to demonstrate them. And when I finished, they congratulated me and told me that if I don't die on Thursday that um, I'll be awarded with a blue belt this coming weekend. Um, so Thursday, I'm going to have to do what's known as the crucible. And it means I'm going to have to fight a new person every minute on the minute for 20 minutes. We well, um, get jumped into a gang? That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's, it's more... It's, yeah. yeah, it's more like a clan. Yeah. Um. So what I've got to do is, you, you know, Vita if, Loca? if it's all if all y'all the white belts in my class, you know, I've got to defend myself against each and every one of y'all. So by the time <laughs> Nicole looking like, let's do it. They're gonna tag, <laughs> they're gonna tag another like, person, fight. then another person, another person. Um, white belts go for twenty minutes. Uh, purple belts go for thirty minutes. Brown belts for forty five, and black belts you have to fight for an hour. What are you smoking to keep your energy up? Um, I like I prefer uh, hybrids. Okay. Um, I like my sativas, but I do use my hybrids. And uh, shout out to Georgia Hemp Company. Um, Joe sent me some personalized oils. Uh, I had a GI flare up recently, kind of put mm. me down. He really helped me out. So I take my my oils, mm. use my topicals from a shoulder that I injured, and I just smoke me a, a nice hybrid, man. Um, indica dominance. That's not really good for jujitsu. You don't want to be all sluggish. But once you get in there and get the pumping, man, I f- the cannabis makes me able to go harder. Um, I smoke before I train. Shout out to High Rollers, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, the rules are smoke, train, repeat. You know, you smoke. That's my pre-workout. I High Rollers, smoke, train, I don't repeat. Take the little energy stuff and stuff. I smoke or I take me a dab or hit my pen or something. And then I go in there and get it in. I feel you. Fuck gym tan lotion. I just smoke. <laughs> <laughs> smoke, train, repeat. Uh, in Jiu Jitsu? Her, her, her want to watch you fight I don't, I don't 20 people. It's going to be open to the public. I can find out, though. Um, her wants gonna, to watch gonna you gonna fight be, 20 people. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be my teammates as well. Everybody yeah. else going for their blue belts. They're going to have to fight as well. So it's going to it's going to be fun. man. So if they let if, it, if it's open to the public, you don't need to bring some chairs. Pull up because <laughs> hey, it's an independent MMA. Yeah. Um, be sure to follow him, man. Pull up. Yo, don't jump in either. Like if you see if he's 20, it's, he got he has to do it. He has to do it. Bring it. Yeah, that's a lot of time, bro. <laughs> see my, see, I'm going through. I, I've, already, I've already got my, my my game plan. So my instructor was like, "Make Just sure real quick." Child. Yeah, he's like, "Make sure you eat well." But we don't strike in jujitsu. There's no striking. This, this is this is maintaining. That's the flip. A position of dominance mm-hmm. and finding a way to literally try to pull your body apart. <laughs> you know, try to take your head off your body. Try to choke you to sleep. My man say you got one thing just to end everybody. Like it's a video I mean, game. I've got a couple of quick moves yeah. that if I start to get tired, yeah, I can right? just pull it out and just you know get it over. But it, I save that for when I get tired. Oh, I'm in tears, buddy. I'm in tears. That's hilarious, man. You know what? And, and I know that you are also real fond of MMA. I know that you mm-hmm. have love for MMA. MMA might be one of the. We might see MMA really go full on with the MMA with. with with CBD, with, with, with medical grade marijuana, allowing fighters, you yeah. know, to use. I really feel like that's down the pipeline, like, soon. You, oh, you yeah. So, so, to segue into that, yeah. um, I, again, want to say shout out to High Rollers Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because that has been the catalyst for a lot of that. Okay. So, with MMA and CBD and cannabis and all that, the first controversial set of brothers was Nick and Nate Diaz. Yes. Shout out Nick, Nate, Matt, yes. what's going on guys? Nate Diaz um, had Nick no Diaz problem. Nick Diaz was suspended from the UFC for like five or ten years for smoking cannabis. And you got guys who are using steroids yeah. who get banned for a year. Mm. It was kind of like a personal shot at him, you know, like because he, he smokes. But got the, he, you know, he trains naturally. Well, what happened was after his brother beat Conor McGregor, yeah. remember when he beat Conor McGregor mm-hmm. and choked him out? At the press conference, mm-hmm. his face is all beat up. He hit the CBD pen. Yes. And they're like, what is that? He's like, it's CBD. You know, it's good for recovery, anti-inflammatory. Explained it to him. beat up. Yeah, explained so it to him. So what's happened is, you know, I got reached out last year. They reached out to me like, hey, man, we got this MMA event. It's going to be jujitsu to where the opponent's going to smoke a pre-roll, and then they're going to fight. The winner of the tournament <laughs> gets a pound. 
Oh yeah, so with High Roller, oh check it out the episode. We do have an episode up on Vice. Yeah, I was on I was on Vice. It's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, with High Roller, so what happens is Shh. you smoke a pre roll with your opponent. You go into the ring. You fight. The winner comes out. You have to fight multiple times throughout the night, and the winner at the end of the night gets a pound from Burner. I'm at Burner. Mm. Yeah, Burner's. Now, do you get money too, or we just get yes, the pounds? Yes. Um, so, they, so they're doing qualifiers. That's why I was in Miami last last weekend, not okay. this weekend, um, for High Rollers Miami. So the event got so big to where they're doing qualifiers now. We've got Vegas coming up next month. We've got New York, San Diego, Denver, um, Seattle, to where you're winning cash prizes. It's to qualify for the big one at the end of the year. So these mm-hmm. other ones are open no qualifiers, and at the end of the year, that's the one where you come out and compete for a pound. Solid, man. Well, congr- I, I, I wish you much luck in all your endeavors, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you about to fight. That. You about to fight about twenty dudes, and I know and, you, and it's females too. We got females, some dangerous women. You about to fight too. twenty people? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Come out. You got to come out with that move. You know, women don't women don't care. Like just bow. Man, I'm gonna tell you, uh, a female jujitsu fighter is one of the most dangerous women on the planet. I believe that, bro. You know, on the planet. Let me tell you something. My sister, my sister raised me to understand. She was like, as a man, you got more strength than me, upper body. Like it's just gonna be natural. But my strength naturally is in my legs. Like, I can kick you through a wall. Like, like those are her the quote. I can kick you through a wall if I feel like it. So I can see if a female had her base right, caught you right here, she could throw you right through there, boy, real quick. Real and, quick. And it's, it's going to be the small person that does it mm-hmm. to you, too. Mm-hmm. It's going to be that, like, I blew my shoulder out last year. I t- tore the AC joint, dislocated, and broke the scapula. Throwing a dude that's about 120 pounds, like five foot two, The smallest guy in class. Bad technique on my behalf. Oh, stuff you got to worry about, man. Well, Stanley, I appreciate you coming through tonight, man. Definitely helping us out with this conversation about legalization in the black market and, and, and giving us your two cents about the, stu- about the and, subject. And to Sonny's um, discussion about yeah. mental health, oh, yeah. um, that is another thing in jiu-jitsu. Um, if, I don't know if you see the 22 a day, where people always talk about 22 a day, where mm-hmm. 22 veterans a day commit suicide and due to PTSD. And so Mission Defense started an organization where it is, you know, we defy, and it's 22 a day, and they do jiu-jitsu for PTSD. Because mm. oftentimes, the toughest battles that a veteran fights or a person going through something fights is you know, with themselves. Facts. And so they use jiu-jitsu to get it out. So I want to thank her again, Sonny, for bringing up the topic of mental health, because we have to continue to talk about that in our community. Yes, yes, factuals, man. Brother, I appreciate you coming appreciate through, you, as bro. always, man. I know you're going to kick it with us for a second. Oh, yeah. And that's Cash Color. Founded in 2015, Peak Relief is the premier landing spot for your medical marijuana needs in Maryland. Not built by national consultants or businesses, but by friends with a dream to return home and create a better dispensary. Located at 2001 Chapman Ave in Rockville, Maryland, stop by Peak Relief and see what they have in store for you.